be to take over the session. Welcome to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, the next is about Avaraniyam Dhyayam Vyakhyasyam Hayathuva Tanguva Nandandari. Avaraniyam iti Varanam Chikitsa Na Vidyate Varanam Veshante Avaranam Vyathaya Hata Nadikrute Krutu Adhyaya Varaniyam. This is what Bhag Dhalana says. Now, Varana, the word is the treatment. So, conditions where the disease cannot be treated. Now, when Sushma says a disease cannot be treated, that doesn't mean that the patient should not be treated. There is a uh, a issue of what we call as end of life care or palliative treatment. Now, once the disease has gone to a level where it cannot be treated, then the next part is to ensure that the patient's life is somewhat comfortable, and that kind of a treatment is a, what we call as a the palliative treatment. And the aim of this chapter is to identify such a status in a disease where a further specific treatment to the disease may not be possible, and you may have to go for the other palliative treatment where the symptoms of the patient could be reduced and the patient is made comfortable. In the contemporary medicine, you have a separate branch of medicine called as palliative medicine or is end of life care, which has mainly three components, the emotional to because the uh, end result is almost certain, so you need to take care of the emotional aspects of the family as well as the, uh, the well-wishers well of the patient and the patient also should be prepared for the end result as well. And the social also there is another aspect in the, in the surroundings of the patient, his commitments which have to be taken care of. Then of course the part of the physical, in the physical management is mainly the pain management and management of whatever the symptoms are seen depending upon the symptoms you will have to have symptomatic management uh, and uh, the level of that symptomatic management could be to any level the, it could be like a patient who is on artificial respiration or ventilation or even the cardiac pumping also could be to that level or it could be to the level possible within but the whole approach would be you will not be mainly focusing on the primary disease treatment but you will be focusing on the uh, maintenance of the physical condition of the patient, that's uh, the aim. So this kind of a care is what we call as a palliative medicine and Sushuva has uh, given the concept of that palliative medicine in this chapter. Now when to go for this palliative approach, your trend has to change this. Upadrava is priyajustaha vyadhyo yantya vadyatam rasayana dvinavatsa tan shunu yekmanah mama the, those conditions which have multiple complications and it has resulted in an incurable condition and Rasayana result, Rasayana also doesn't produce, Rasayana chikits also doesn't produce the clinical effects, they are considered as a, that is a stage where you will have to shift to the palliative care. Now, when to go for this? What is based upon the type of the diseases? The diseases which are considered as Mahagataha, that's the diseases by nature themselves would have poor prognosis. That doesn't mean that every patient having these diseases need to go for palliative treatment, but the chances of going for a, such a situation is quite high. So when you treat such diseases where uh, the basically the prognosis is poor and the treatment is complicated, there is always a possibility that you may reach to a state where you need to shift to the palliative approach and such diseases are called as Mahagada or Dushtikitsagada. According to Sushura, the eight of them are considered as Mahagada. They are Vatavyadhi, Pramehascha, Kustham, Asho, Bhagandaram, Ashmari, Mudhagar, Prascha, Tathaiva, Udaram, Ashtamam, Ashtavyate, Prakatyeva, Dushtikitsagada, Mahagada. These are by nature Dushtikitsagada. Now when the word Mahagada, uh, Mahavyadhi, is named in different or uh, is classified in different samhitas with somewhat a different approach. The Mahagadas of Sushruta, Mahagadas of Karaka or Ashtanga Sangraha are somewhat slightly Ashtanga Sangraha and Ashtanga Sudaya. There is, of course, there is a variation. It should be Ashtanga Sudaya title. Now, anyway, the, there is a, a 
a difference. Now this difference is based upon the clinical approach. According to Charaka, Vata Vyaji, Apasmara, Kusta, Shoka, Udaroga, Bhumma, Madhumeha and Rajakshma are considered as the Mahavyaji. In Ashtanga Hridaya, Vata Vyaji, Ashmari, Kusta, Meha, Udaroga, Bhagandara, Madhumeha, Grahani. So this difference doesn't make much of an issue. Now about that word Mahagada, again there is somewhat more of descriptions in different texts. Charaka has mentioned, Atatwa Bhinivesha is a major important Mahagada. Eko Mahagada iti Atatwa Bhinivesha. Atatwa Bhinivesha is a patient who is in a comatal stage where patient is not conscious and is not able to perceive the surroundings. That's a coma stage and that deep coma is, also, is considered as a Mahagada and Sushila Jaraka at one context says that that itself is a Mahagada where you need to shift to the palliative treatment. Lingani Avedayan Tietani Ekarsh Mahagadam Sampraptam Rajayakshmanam Kshaya Pranasya Pradam When Rajayakshma is presented with all the 11 Lakshans, the uh, Rajayakshma has that 11 uh, presentations and when all the presentations are present, then too it is considered as Mahagada. Mahagada says Shvayatu Haithat Prakopa Rupam Prashaman Prashaman Aprichada. Now Shvayatu also is considered as a Mahagada when you have all the clinical symptoms. Or uh, the Mahavarata Vegyana Tathastrasya Iva Shakinaha Madhya Prasangam Dhanjajna Hamha Dosham Mahagadam. When a patient has a Vata Vyadhi, and in the third of a Vata Vyadhi, if it has uh, somewhat a stable stage and in that condition if a person uh, consumes alcohol that alcohol consumption in a case of Vata Vyadhi can result in Mahagada or which again can result in such a situation where the treatment has to be shifted to the palliative approach. Marmani Bastim Hrdayam Shirascha Pradhana Bhutani Vadanti Tanyaha Pranashraya Tanihi Pirayam To Vata Deyo Asunami Pirayanti Tam Samshita Namu Anupadana Tam Mahagada Nam Shru Samya Raksham The diseases which are located are where the base of the disease in Marma Basti Hrdaya or such vital areas they also can be Mahagada. So about the Mahagada there is a bit wider view than what Sushul has said in other Samhitas. Now in general in a patient, uh, for, uh, in a patient, when you are treating a chronic patient, the signs, uh, clinical signs, which can uh, show that, which can show a trend that, that this patient may not uh, may not recover possible would be pranamamsakshayaha, shoshaha, trishna, chardhi, jorastatha, atisarastu mochacha, hikka shvahar tatevata, yetehi upadrabi hitustam sarvam evo yuvartayetam. A patient who has a, a emaciation or the emaciation both physically as well as his vital signs are reducing or altering life and who has excess of thirst, vomiting, fever, atisara, diarrhea or unconsciousness, hiccup, breathlessness, these could be the signs of impending stage where the prognosis could be poor. Now, in the contemporary medicine, there was a study done, and that st study done is uh, about the common symptoms which are which require the end of life care. In the contemporary system, the symptoms which are uh, listed as uh, the signs, symptoms which uh, show the uh, this direction or which show that there is a need to go for this, and this is a source. Of from uh, the, uh, those symptoms is a statistical analysis. This is based upon the statistical analysis of uh, the end of life stages and the commonly seen last days of life symptoms seen in the last days of life are pain, nausea, vomiting, oral problems like dryness or ulcers etc, anorexia, agitation or behavioral changes where the patient may have agitation, diarrhea, excessive secretions, ascites, breathlessness, anxiety, depression, confusion, Feelings of loss or grief, aloneness, spiritual, religious, or abandonment, patients having a psychological changes. These are the listed conditions based upon the statistical analysis of patients at the end of life state. What are the symptoms there? That doesn't mean that every patient having any one of these symptoms is at the end of, state, end of life stage situation. But this has to be analyzed. These symptoms have to be viewed with the clinical picture of the patient, and at times these symptoms could be suggestive of a situation where the patient is uh, moving towards the end of the stage, uh, end of life condition and you need to change your approach. 
Sushudhanam gives you some more specific signs in specific conditions where you have to shift to this uh, approach, that end of life care. That's, that's all the possibility. Now, again, I remind the same. Now, when Sushu says about these uh, uh, in, uh, conditions where you have to change the shift the approach, that doesn't mean that every patient of this sort has to be done. But these are the clinical signs which suggest you that uh, this patient may not now get cured and you need to prepare for the end of life. And those are in a case of Vata Vyadhi, a patient with Vata Vyadhi, Shunam, Sukta Twajam, Bhagnam, Kampat Mahanani Vidam, Naram Rujartam Antascha, Vata Vyadhi Vinashayata. If a patient with Vata Vyadhi develops edema and if he has loss of sensations or if he develops a fracture or if he has tremors or distension of the abdomen and severe pain and pain, pain, pain which is uh, cannot be localized, a non-localized pain, that's considered as a, a possible sign of a, a, in this uh, situation where further treatment may not be possible. Now this again uh, I have quoted from the statistical analysis. Now this kind of you get data, you get plenty in the contemporary system. Patients with the neurological conditions, patients uh, treated for the neurological conditions and uh, when they develop this end of life approach, now, that's a suggestion that you need to shift to the palliative care. The symptoms which could be seen uh, and in a patient where you need to shift to the palliative care. Now, again, I repeat the same. The shift to the palliative care is not based upon only these symptoms. It has to be analyzed with the, the whole clinical picture. But the clinical symptoms which are seen in such patients and analyzed statistically, this is uh, the statistical analysis. The symptoms are the maximum frequency, 43, uh, almost 43 percent symptoms are generally weakness or pain, then dyspnea in 20 percent, nausea, fatigue, etc. they are in 13 percent, having a worry or having all that thoughts, unnecessary thoughts like 9 percent, 5 percent paralysis and autonomy and social isolation, bleeding and sensory symptoms like vertigo, dizziness uh, and dysarthria and uh, unsteady gait or restlessness, cough, sleep disturbances, SIDs, these are all the symptoms which are analyzed in a patient of neurological conditions, any neurological disease. And we, when a patient reaches the end of life situation, these are the symptoms seen based upon the statistical analysis. Now, the Sushudar again says about the Pramiya Pidaka and again the prediction of prognosis. Yathavta upadrava vishtam ati prasudam eva ba pidaka pidram ghadam prameham hanti maro Now the upadrava, yathavta upadrava, upadravas are for the prameha pidaka and those upadravas are for the prameha pidaka are Makshin kopasar panavayaha shraishin ghanam in a kapaja ulcer, kapaja prameha pidaka, diabetic gangrene Makshin kopasar panavayaha, maggot formation and the flies coming over there Vrishana Badaranam Adayaha Paitikana In a Paitika Varana, Vrishana Badaranam Scrotal Gangrene in Involvement of the Scrotal Gangrene Four years Gangrene Like Hridraha Adayaha Vatikana Hridraha The Cardiac Complications in Vata Javayati Tehi Avishtam Sanyutam Manam Brameham Handi These are the possible complications in case of Brameham which can result in the issue uh, 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 the change or uh, shift to the palliative care end of uh, life care Adi prasutam evava are when there is a severe discharge in the womb. Now in the present day situation, the clinical decision is made upon by classifying the diabetic ulcers. The diabetic ulcers are classification classified as a grade 1 to grade 5. In the conditions where you have the grade 4 and grade 5 gangrene, the treatment would be you will have to remove that dead tissue. The dead tissue has to be removed. Up to grade 3, a conservative approach or a dep simple debridement would be enough. An amputation where the whole tissue has to be removed completely would be when it reaches to the grade 4 or grade 5. Now, uh, again, the same grades, some other method of classification would be of diabetic ulcers are the again, uh, it could be graded as a stage 3 to stage 4 to stage 6, somewhat a slight different approach. Basically, it is the same. A patient with a high risk food where there is a pressure changes and the sensation is lost, 
Then that's the stage two. Stage three is where you have an ulcer, and stage six is where the foot is persisting as such, and the patient has a gangrene, and the gangrene is amputated. These are another method of classifying this. Anyway, when you have a stage five condition where there is a severe necrosis. The only choice is amputation, a sort of palliative care where you will not be really treating the disease but you will be removing the tissues. Or another very popular classification of the diabetic ulcers would be the four stages. So that whether it's a four stage, five stage or six stage, it means the same. There is no difference in that. The only issue is you give some more detail and these are the popular classification. The most popular method of classification is a these uh, superficial infections or deeper infections or extending cellulitis, osteomyelitis and uh, the gangrene, the four stages as such. Or again, it's again the wound classification text, uh, uh, which is often seen uh, and rather quite popular. Texas classification is also very popular. Now, my purpose of showing on these uh, different classifications is uh, not to uh, confuse you, but these are certain of the existing methods of practice so, when you see these data, you need not be confused. So, all of them mean the same. It's only the definition of these stages. In the Texas classification, when you have a penetrating wound into the bone with the infection and with the ischemia, and with the infection and ischemia, you will grading this as a third stage A, B, C, D as such, or second stage when you have a penetrating wound up to the tendon capsule with the infection and with the ischemia. Uh, or with ischemia as well as uh, the infection, the D2, 2, uh, as, so 0 to 3 is a classification and uh, again you will have ABCD classification. These are all uh, meaning the same, at the end it is the same, but all these are aimed at uh, defining your approach like whether you need to go for an amputation or whether you can manage with the conservative treatment. Now, the next is Pravinam Prasodangam Jatanetram Hataswaram, Panchakarma Gunatitam, Kustam, Hantiha, Kustinam. In case of a Kustha Vyadi, the conditions where the approach would be changed, like you cannot treat the disease further and the palliative has to be done. Sushrita says, those who have Prabhina Prasutangam, when there is a wound and lepromatic ulcer and then there is a discharge from the ulcer, or when there is a congenital infiltration and the voice of the patient has changed, these are the conditions and panchakarma gunatitam. When the panchakarma treatment doesn't really produce the results or the patient is not fit for panchakarma in a patient of kusta. Now, whether kusta has to be considered as leprosy or otherwise, we will not go into that controversy. But uh, possibly in case of lepromatic conditions, when you have these signs, that suggests you have a poor prognosis. Of course, with the currently available anti-lepromatic treatment, you may not really consider this as a real end-of-life conditions, but the they could be considered as a the severe as a condition of a severity. That's exactly true. If you consider this as a signs of severity and then you need to your approach to be more energetic, these symptoms are absolutely correct. And now when we consider a patient of leprosy, the issues which you will consider would be primarily the eye signs when there is involvement of the eye, the condition would be quite critical in the sense there is always a possibility of loss of vision and hence your treatment has to be more energetic. Now, usually what happens is in a patient of leprosy, the, usually you start with the standard anti lepromatic treatment. But when there is an involvement of the eyes, there is, along with the anti lepromatic treatment, glucocorticoids are given so that the tissue is salvaged, the damage the tissue is minimized. Now that indication, I am not saying that this is a palliative care, but so there is a, uh, you have to be very clear, like when I say there is a need to give the glucocorticoids, that doesn't mean it is a palliative care, it is not end of life condition, but there is a slight change in the perception of the treatment and I compare it to what Sushura has said, so that, that, that you have to have a very clear cut clarification. So it's not an end of life situation, but it's a situation where you need to have a palliative approach and palliative approach will be glucocorticoids given. And those are when you have these signs of in the lids, cornea or iris, ciliary body, and these are involved and you have these complications and till to prevent the possibility of a cataract or a, a, this uh, complete, uh, you know, uh, this uh, 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 
septic 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 focus of the eyes and loss of vision to prevent that you need to switch on to the glucocorticoids now in case of arshas the hemorrhoids trishna arochaka shulartam ati prasuta shunitam shopati sarasinyuktam arsho vyadhi vinashayet in the arsho vyadhi hemorrhoid conditions patients who have systemic complications of thirst arochaka they did anorexia or pain or when there is massive bleeding and patient has edema and diarrhea that's considered as having a poor prognosis of course now the approach is slightly different we uh, hemorrhoids may not be considered as fatal but uh, we most of the times the approach of the clinical symptoms of hemorrhoids is uh, considered by the local signs of the stages staging of hemorrhoids is very popular now stage 1 to stage 4 stage 4 is prolapsed as such but in these stages or uh, uh, classification the systemic complications of the hemorrhoids are not really included and one of the most common systemic complication of the hemorrhoids would be anemia due to the blood loss and whatever sushuda has mentioned these are maybe the major signs of the anemia which is not really included in the uh, clinical approach of the hemorrhoids anemia is considered as a consequence of the blood loss and the hemorrhoids are considered as a, a simple local pathology hemorrhoids are not considered as a systemic disease in the present system which again needs to be reviewed Whereas according to Ayurveda, all the actions are produced to agreement. So that's a point of controversy. Of course, more details about this issue we can discuss when we go into the uh, chapter related to the actions. Now the Bhagandara. In case of Bhagandara again, Bhata Mantra Purushani Krme Shukrme Mava Bhagandara the Prasurvandi Yesya Tam Paribandhya. That when a patient has a discharge of urine fecal material also from the uh, tract. So that means that there is a complex fistula, which is connecting to the anorectal, the so gastrointestinal tract as well as the urinary system, and that makes the prognosis poor. Krme ha shu krme ho ar bar the maggots are formed in the area, or the patient passes the semen through. So that's again suggestive of a tract which is very complicated and having multiple tracts connecting many organs. The prognosis is poor. And according to Sushuda, you need to shift to a palliative care. In the present day situation, it may not be exactly word by word like you shift to palliative care, but instead, uh, that makes the issue complicated. Whenever the tracks are multiple and the tracks are having different directions, they are having the poor, comparatively poor prognosis. And the assessment of the track and the grading of the tracks would be, as you uh, see in the picture, like a A grade one is a low fistula with a single tract, and the it has just intersphinct, intersphinctic or transphinctic within the uh, rectal area and within the anal area. Grade two is where you have multiple tracts and there is abscess also, first correction also, and it could be uh, having this uh, intersphinctic tract or transphinctic tracts. As the intersphinctic is in between the sphincters and transphinctic across the uh, sphincters. As it. Or grade three is where you will have a trans, essentially transphinctic fistula, and it has a, a impaired continence, affects the continence, or it has systemic disorders like Crohn's disease. This is a very important thing. A patient who has a fistula, you need to rule out the uh, involvement of the colon. Colonic diseases are to be ruled out, and that makes the condition grade three, where a intervention can result in more serious complications and uh, grade 4 is where you have multiple complications multiple fistula tract and the fistula tract surrounds the anus the horseshoe fistula right that's considered grade 4 and grade 5 is where you have a supraspinctic or interspinctic direct connection with the intestines that's uh, the grade 5 where the prognosis is poor that's how it says uh, of course uh, when you have that grade 5 There is always a possibility that there could be a connection to the urinary tract too. So there is a possibility that the patient may have the clinical symptoms of what Sushil has said, like the bath or mutra purusha uh, passing through. Now the next is in Ashmari. Prashuna nabhi prashana. Rudham mutra mudal mita. Ashmari ekshape chacho sikata ashakara mita. The Ashmari calculus in the urinary tract. When it is presented with the generalized edema and analyzed edit and Uh, this is or uh, anuria rudhamutram uh, anuria 
that's to consider as a poor prognosis. And that generalized steady mind anuria are the major uh, clinical presentations of a renal failure, either acute or chronic renal failure. So if a urolithiasis results in a sign of renal failure, that's a sign of poor prognosis. And uh, in general, when a patient is, uh, stones are presented in the clinical approach, in a patient with the stones, uh, urinary stones, the approach would be whether there is a need of urgent intervention or whether you can manage with the casual, uh, with the symptomatic management. An urgent intervention, indications for the urgent interventions are if the patient has a evidence of urosepsis, there is a frank pus or a presence of infection seen under the microscope or if the pain is severe and vomiting or if there is an evidence of renal failure or obstruction in a transplanted kidney or a single kidney so if the patient has both the kidneys you can wait and watch if it is a single kidney it's an emergency condition or bilateral stones these are considered as urgent intervention conditions as such so the algorithm of management of two kidney stones patients with the acute kidney stones are when you have a patient with the, the kidney stones the first of the thing is you have to decide about the size if it is more than 10 millimeter size and uh, then there is a need to go for a direct intervention immediately. Size is another of the criteria. If it is less than that, then you try to with the manage the medicines. If the, with the medicines, the stone could pass out within six weeks, then it can be. If it is not, then you need to go into the further analysis of the stones. Cost for the stone formation, like whether it is a creatinine stone or calcium stone and so on. And then you go for the detailed management. This is what is done. And the last, of course, would be when the risk of recurrence, when there is a risk of recurrence, then that has to be treated. This is how the approach to a case of renal calculus is done now, which seems to be different from what Susha has said, but primarily the only thing is you need to prevent that complication as such. Now, in case of a mudangarpa, obstructed labor conditions, now, uh, what Sushita has said is Garbhakosha Parasangaha, Makkallaha, Yonisamurutihi, Hanyata Sriya Mudagarbhaha, Yathopta Shchabhi Upadravaha. Now, in a case of uh, uh, this, uh, 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 perfume, as progression of the labor, during the labor, if there is a Yonisamuruti, the dilatation of the os doesn't occur, constriction, it remains constricted. Or Makkallaha, if there is a acute severe pain, and there is a distension of the abdomen or prasanga, garbhakosha prasanga, if there is an abnormal presentation, yes, if there is an abnormal presentation, in such conditions, the mood of can be fatal. Now, in the present situation, this may be considered as an indication for the uh, surgical intervention or uh, the uh, cesarean section. And for the cesarean section, the standard pra medical practice, now standard guideline now is a uh, based upon the Lucas classification. Lucas classification, the risks are considered under category 1 to 4 and the category 1 is where there is an immediate threat to life of the woman or fetus with a maternal fetal compromise. That's considered as category 1 indication for the cesarean section where there is a immediate risk as such and it has to be an emergency procedure. Whereas category 4 is a, you may have a casual uh, cesarean section, planned cesarean section. This is based upon a proper analysis of the total status which occur in the patient as such. Now those conditions which are can be considered as category 1 to 4 are category 1 are patient with fetal distress and persistent fetal bradycardia or a corn prolapse, severe placental abruption or antipartum hemorrhage with the maternal hypolemia or a failed instrumental delivery or a instrumental delivery has not really resulted in or when there is a rupture signs these are category one where there has to be a, a immediate surgery within 30 minutes in category two you can have a crack of 30 to 40 45 minutes where patient has a antipartum hemorrhage without hypovolemia or when there is a failed induction of label after induction there is uh, induction doesn't have uh, uh, show the results uh, like methadone given doesn't produce the results as such or a Doppler study shows abnormality or the con condition of the uh, uh, fetus is uh, not reassuring, not confirmatory. Then category 3 where you have uh, still more 45 to 75 minutes time would be history of previous labor 
a previous uh, LSCS or a patient with the cephalopoid with disproportion or breach presentations. And category 4 where you can be elective LSCS could be done and where there is uh, other indications. This is what the standard practice. Of course, it doesn't come into the question of uh, the choice of the patient where patients prefer LSCS. That's not the issue. Anyway, the standard protocol is based upon same clinical science and whatever Susan has said is a uh, Almost in similar way, only thing is now you have more detailed, more structured representation of these indications. Now, in case of Udara, Pashwabhanga Annavidvesha, Shopati Sarapitam, Viltam Puriamanam, Yarvati Udara, in a patient of Udara abdominal pathology, possibly ascites. Now, because in all the Udara end state will be the ascites, yet, so we will make it as a, a patient with ascites as such. Uh, or any abdominal mass to a certain extent, this also is true. If a patient has a Pashwamanda, that's the distension is more on the size, um, the um, uh, lumbar areas where the distension is more, that suggests if a free fluid in the peritoneum, when there is a central distension, it's usually it's a gaseous distension. When there is a distension of the abdomen due to the fluid, it's in the size. In the panoramic uh, is a lumbar area, that distension seems to be more in the lying down posture. Anavidvesha, uh, dyspepsia, shofati sara, and the patient has a edema as well as a diarrhea, right? And even after removal of the fluid, virictum, it's not only the veritana, it could be like that uh, paracentesis also. Even after removal of the fluid, if the fluid gets reaccumulated, these are considered as a the Pajja condition where you need to shift to the palliative approach. Now, of course, in the present day situation, a patient presenting, presenting with the abdominal distension as such, your approach would be you would have to confirm whether there is a, a vascular pathology like abdominal aneurysm or whether it is intra abdominal pathology. And in the intra abdominal pathology, you would have to confirm whether there is a acute emergency like obstruction or perforation and that needs to be treated as such. Now, Estamati Prasamya says, Shete Nipatito Piva, Shita Vito, Antarashtan Stajore, and Vita Naraha. A patient having fever, if he becomes uh, uh, unconscious or, uh, or just uh, uh, semi conscious, semi conscious or unconscious, and he is not able to uh, keep erect, Shete Nipatito Piva. Even if he is uh, kept erect, he falls down or he again sleeps as such. Then Shita Tita Hantar Ushnascha, the temperature seems to be external temperature is reduced but core temperature of the body is increased. These are the exact signs of toxemia and the, in a patient of toxemia that prognosis is uh, poor. That's uh, exactly the same and uh, the exact signs of toxemia mentioned by Sushra Arvi uh, is our practice are used even now to identify patients of toxemia. Yohrasaroma Raktakshaha Shruti Sanghata Shulavan, Nitya Mukhtrena Uchhasya Tam Jaro Hantimano, in a patient of Jara again, these uh, temperature conditions, if the patient has Hrasaroma, the has are erect, highly erection, occurs, Raktaksha, congenital infiltration is there, and Sanghata Shulavan, if there is very severe pain and constant pain, and if the patient breathes with the mouth, that is a respiratory difficulty, that too is a sign of poor prognosis. Of course, this could be more seen in case of a, a respiratory infective conditions as such. Hikka shwasa pipasartha mudham vibhantarochan santato chwasinam kshinam naram kshapayati dvaraha Patients who have santato chwasa, either kusmans or chain strokes breathing or patients who have hikka shwasa, uh, breathlessness or hiccup as such and thrust also are, and mudham and unconsciousness. This usually it suggests you of a complication produced due to accumulation of toxic substances like renal failure, hepatic failure like conditions. These are seen or what we call as organ failure signs. Then avilaksham tatamyantam nitraiktam adivata shina shontamam santyanaram nasheti jaraha a patient with the emaciation, jara and emaciation and his all his sensory organs are not functioning properly and patient feels sleepy, these are often the clinical signs which you see in case of a gross electrolyte imbalances in a patient of a septic conditions. So these are all suggest your poor prognosis. Of course, now in the present day situation, you may have a better investigation tools and many of these conditions could be 
man in to a certain extent. But a general approach in a patient of uh, this fever and seizures, patients presenting with the seizures, of course, uh, this is about the abasma, uh, um, and patient presenting with the seizures as such. The approach would be a patient with the simple, uh, whether there is a febrile or afebrile seizures as such. Patients presenting with the seizures and symptoms of the fever, you will have to confirm whether it is a simple febrile or a, a seizures other than that of the uh, febrile conditions. And if it is a febrile fever uh, seizures, the main treatment would be to the fever conditions, temperature has to be managed and the symptoms of uh, uh, management of the seizures may be just considered as a secondary issue as such. Whereas in a patient with the uh, seizures which persist, you need to go for the CSF examination or the neuroimaging if the temperature management of the temperature alone is not sufficient and this is done by the clinical assessment if a patient with a febrile seizure has a seizure which is shorter than 10 minutes and there is only a single seizure you will have to consider this as a simple febrile seizure if the seizures are persisting more than one episode in 24 hours and the patient visibly in a normal uh, neurological examination again you can watch but if there is an abnormality of the seizure persisting for more than 10 minutes and more than one seizure during the same fever event then you need to go for the CSF examination or brain imaging as such. That's how it has to be done. Now, in general, a patient with the, any patient who is on a chronic disease conditions may result in a sequential organ failure. Now, in a patient with septicemia, particularly septicemia or any other chronic disease conditions, there is one protocol of assessing this sequential organ failure assessment. Now, this is a general protocol followed in case of ICU, patients in ICU and in septicemia, but very specifically septicemia. And the evidences of the sequential organ failure are, sequential organ failure is where the patient needs to be shifted to an ICU. He cannot be managed with a general ward. And this is one of the standard protocols followed in clinical conditions, which is quite important from the clinical factors as such. A patient with a Glasgow coma scale, if the Glasgow coma scale is 15, that's normal, whereas if it is less than 6, that's a grade 4, and grade 4 needs to be essentially treated in a, a, a ICU. And if the patient has a oxygen concentration, and if the concentration is only with the maintained with the risk, 100, uh, maintained 100% or less than 100%, even with the support, respiratory support, that's considered as a grade 4. Whereas uh, if it is uh, uh, the concentration of uh, oxygen which is required is uh, in, uh, in the range of 400 units as such, then it's uh, the normal, the oxygen which is uh, volume of the oxygen which is uh, uh, taken in and taken out. Then the platelet count, if the platelet count is less than 20,000, that's again a consideration of organ failure, thereby patient may, you have to assess for further issues. If the bilirubin level is 200 or more than that, or a, a patient with creatinine value which is also higher, these are the indications for the issue as such. In a patient of septicemia, these are quite important because one of the major complications of septicemia, the next would be the organ, multiple organ involvement, which require a total a different approach to the management. Uh, so these conditions are about how to assess a patient of septicemia and grade the septicemia. Now, in, a, in the present day situation, in a patient presents with the septicemia, that uh, the temperature raised due to an infective condition, the general standard protocol of the approach, treatment. Now, I am suggesting about the standard protocol of the treatment. Uh, in practice, most of the times, the patient uh, treatment will be usually starting with antibiotics, but antibiotics are not necessary in the beginning. You need to give, ensure that the patient has sufficient oxygen concentration, ensure that the patient has sufficient hydration, the fluid has to be maintained, and ensure that the patient's systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressures are maintained with the, any of the medicines, IV fluids as such. Then monitor and particularly monitor for the acidosis, urine output and the, the lactic acid levels have to be assessed. Blood culture is one of the options. Now, in the present day situation, 
blood capture is done only after the approach for the treatment fails then the antibiotics have to be given this is about uh, uh, the approach for the management of a patient of a septicemia a standard protocol which is to be followed now shwasa shula vipasartam kshiram jana ipishram visheshan naram ruddham atisaro vinashayata a patient with the jara and atisara diarrhea and the fever the patients who develops shwasa shula vipasa pain breathlessness and thirst and weight loss kshiram the that's again sign of the dehydration now grading of the dehydration now would be when a patient has a severe dehydration you have lethargic condition unconscious or the sangan very sangan eyeballs and the patient is not able to take the liquids also and gradually the skin pinch now the one of the standard clinical signs is the skin pinch test and when the pinch the skin comes back or doesn't come back to the original position or takes more than 2 seconds to come back that's sign of a severe rehydration and there you need to have more immediate approach in that then shuklaksham anubhesharam urdhu shwasani pitam kritsheena bahumeyantam yakshma yantiha handiha manavam yakshma uh, whether it has been considered as tuberculosis or not again question mark i would consider yakshma as a severe respiratory infections where there is a respiratory complications uh, so either it is tuberculosis alone or something else is the other issue we will not go into for that issue now now when a patient presents with the, these respiratory conditions usually we categorize them under the five categories stage 2 to stage 4 sorry four categories stage, uh, as such when the patient has severe respiratory distress stridor or a respiratory arrest that's a sign of poor prognosis and naturally uh, the our option would be you need to ensure that the patient has a, a artificial respiration a completely total 100% dependent on artificial respiration where both mechanical ventilation as well as oxygen supply has to be maintained whereas in the stage 1 and stage 2 simply maintaining the oxygen would be concentration would be enough there is no need of support to the respiration mechanical support to the respiration once the patient goes into stage 3 if it's ambiguous a partial support like that partial ventilation and oxygen concentration may have to be maintained that's how the approach is done then shwasa shura vipasa anadvesha granthi modadaha bhut durbalatvante gulmi no muti vishyadaha in a patient with the gulma abdominal mass conditions if there is a systemic involvement like shwasa shura vipasa anadvesha then that too is considered as a, a poor prognosis of course you may not have a general protocol now every, every abdominal mass has to be considered based upon the specific diagnosis atmatam badanishchinam chanda chanti hikka tulanvitam rudya shwasa samavishtam vidradhi nashayat naram in a case of vidradhi it's again the clinical symptoms of the toxemia which are presented so in the present day situation all that complications could be included under the grading of the toxemia as such anyway uh, the uh, of course uh, this slide is uh, not necessary then pandanta nagha yashta pand nitashmanaha pand sankhata darshita pand roki vinashati a patient of pand roga if he presents with the severe pand that uh, discoloration paler seen in danta nakha as, as well as eyes or if the patient is uh, seeing the objects as pale then it's considered as a, a poor prognosis of course in the present day situation you may not have that kind of a, a, assessment the assessment is based upon the clinic, uh, hemoglobin assessment and if the hemoglobin is less than 6.5 that's considered as life threatening and where you need to have immediate blood transfusion whereas if the hemoglobin is uh, in between 6.5 to 7.9 that's a serious condition where you have, have a planned blood uh, this uh, blood transfusion above this level they can be managed without blood transfusion if the indications are not of a progressive nature that's how it is the uh, handled now then chande yastu bhavsha lohitakshana rakta nam te disham drishta rakta pitta rakta pitti lohitam vinashadi a patient with bleeding disorders if uh, the patient vomits blood in large quantities and the patient is seeing the reddish color around that's a sign of 
a severe condition, severe prognosis. Now, of course, patients with the bleeding from any source, you need to grade the patients of bleeding under the usual the grading is the four grades, and the usual classification is grade one is where the quantity is smaller and it could be like oropharyngeal bleeding, epistaxis, etc., and the patient may present in the bedeki, etc., where you need to offer a treatment based upon the specific causes. Whereas a patient presenting with a bleeding associated with the severe hemodynamic uh, instability, hemodynamic instability is based upon the assessment of the circulatory pressure and postural pressure changes. When the postural pressure changes are more than 10 uh, millimeter, that's considered as severe, and which uh, can are a patient presenting with a bleeding in CNS. That's uh, considered as an acute emergency, and this classification is by based on the WHO organization. Uh, classification of grading of the bleeding conditions irrespective of the source of the bleeding this is about irrespective of the source of the bleeding you need to assess the bleeding as a critical sign and manage the complications of the bleeding the uh, but that's not the primary management the primary management will be the disease management which has to be considered then a patient with unmada, psychological disturbance, if the patient is lying down with the face downwards or and the patient has emaciation, that's also considered as a poor performance. Of course, we do not have a protocol of making these uh, uh, signs or making these uh, critical conditions in a case of psychiatric condition, but Grade, uh, grading of these are considered based upon the DSM classification and the DSM-5 classifications are considered as severe psychological conditions which require an immediate intervention and those are either new, uh, listed as a neural development disorder, schizophrenia or even so on. So these are the conditions based upon DSM-5. Bahusho apasmarantundu prakshinam chalita bhuvam netrabhyam te vikurvanam apasmarantundu a patient with the apasma seizure conditions, again the management will be if the patient has repeated apasma and if the patient is physically weak and there is a movement, the eyeballs and the eyelids have rapid movement and the eyeballs are also moving rapidly, that's considered as a poor prognosis. Of course, the present day situation would be classification of the seizures would be like either whether it's a focal or generalized or unknown onset where the real causes are not known. Focal is a, where there is a definite focus in the brain as such, which could be seen under MRI scan or so on. But the management would be whether the patient needs an immediate management, symptomatic management of the seizure would be based upon whether it is a status epilepticus or the other way. A status epilepticus is uh, defined as a seizure that lasts for longer than five minutes or having more than one seizure within a five minute period without returning to a normal level of consciousness which needs now at this stage of st status epilepticus you need to have a muscle relaxant followed with the, the respiratory support whereas with the other conditions the symptomatic management for the seizure would be the anti seizure drugs like uh, uh, sedatives or maybe the specific anti seizure drugs but Further detailed management will be based upon the cause which needs to be assessed. So that's about the predicting the prognosis. It is Sushal Samhitayam Sutra Sthane Avarani Yonama Trishtrimshodhyaya. The prognosis of the condition is to be assessed by before planning of the treatment and efforts should be done to reduce the distress even in incurable conditions. With this, we will conclude today. If there are any questions, we will try to answer the questions and then. Uh, there is one question. Um, what about uh, the choice of drugs in uh, uh, choice of drugs uh, in according to Sushuda? Sushuda has not mentioned specific drugs like, but now we have a protocol protocol of treating these uh, conditions, and that detailed pro uh, protocol is uh, uh, of dealing with this uh, pregnancy is not our aim now, and uh, which requires a lot. A lot of time, so I'll just keep it as it. Now we have a standard protocol of treating this, and may in this uh, today's discussion I have not included that. So that's it, uh, right? Okay. Right. There are no other questions.